For most of us, breathing is the easiest thing to do because oxygen is naturally available in the air. An oxygen crisis in the country continues to bite and patients are losing their lives while in search of this precious commodity. Oxygen is an expensive luxury. Now, Waziri wa Afya Mutahikagwe ametangaza upungufu wa hewa ya oxygen nchini kutokana na idadi kubwa ya wagonjwa walio na uhitaji mkubwa wa hewa hiyo. Why is the government not taking the oxygen crisis as something that needs to be addressed? My name is Ruth Ombui Njuguna. I am a nurse entrepreneur. I am a mother of three children. I am also married. I've been married for the last uh, almost 23 years and I've also practiced as a nurse for the last 23 years. I was born and raised in a small village in Nakuru County. Uh, it's called Subukia. And uh, my father was a businessman, a shopkeeper and my mom was a farmer, what would actually call a peasant farmer. Ruth alizaliwa mwaka wa mwaka elfu moja miya tisa sabina tisa. Na alipozaliwa wakati alikuwa na mwaka mmoja hivi, alikuwa meanza hata kuongea. Alikuwa vi haraka sana na kuelewa mambo kwa haraka. Vile watoto wanakaanga inte, alikuwa tuwa kiati kama daktari kwao. Tukienda, nikimpeleka, na niambia, ni mamu, siku moja, nitavaa hizi nguo. Hizi nguo, naika kofia hii, nitaivaa hivi. Top care, as the name would sound, is really a place that gives top quality care. Because we believe we are supposed to impact the world and that's uh, my husband and I are the founders of Top Care. Oxygen is really a necessary thing and we may not know about it because right now it's free, we are breathing it. When it gets to a point where your body actually is not able to do what it should do and then you need to get support what we call oxygen therapy and you can't get it there is nothing as devastating as that i will say at some point when i was doing my pediatric experience um, there was this child who actually had uh, respiratory distress and uh, we were really trying to run around helter skelter with the nurse that was on duty then to try and get oxygen and uh, we had a cylinder but we actually did not even have the accessories. And I remember the nurse even trying to see if there is a way a tube, an NG tube would actually work on that child. And that was really a sad moment uh, because it's one thing to lose a child. It's also another thing to lose a child, but thinking maybe oxygen would have saved them. Then came the issue of COVID. Hello Kenyans, I want to inform you that the Ministry of Health has confirmed the first coronavirus case in Kenya. But now the country is facing a crisis as oxygen cylinders go missing, straining hospitals' capacity to provide this life-saving gas as demand for oxygen grows. Both my parents actually contracted COVID. And I remember getting calls. Dad is unwell and uh, is, is not breathing right. So I uh, thank God for the Subukia facility because at least we had uh, one uh, cylinder of oxygen and that's where he started and was able to be transferred to a facility that uh, had oxygen. 
Like two days or so later, my mom was not so well. I called the facility, the Subuki and Autop Care. I called and told them just uh, ensure we have a standby oxygen, we have this. So we actually uh, were able to give my mom oxygen. So I paused to really think and, and just really see how we can lose lives just because of lack of such an essential commodity. So I had no doubt that this is one thing I needed to pursue. I partnered with Oxygen Hub to bridge the existing gap in oxygen uh, supply in facilities. Then statistics say just about 20% uh, or less of the oxygen needs were being met around that time what they were doing buys into the dream or what I was also doing, which is running or ensuring everybody gets quality, affordable healthcare. And so Oxygen Hub came in and was able to source the plants, was also able to install and give us some technical advice, also um, support in terms of trainings and policy making. Um, and I think it's only upwards from here and I think we're just ready to see you um, really thrive and get those numbers and continue to provide access to oxygen. That's really what we're all here for, right? Our first duty is to bridge the gap, so we ensure that uh, we deliver that to your doorstep. The price is affordable, they are reliable, and uh, anytime we need them, they are accessible. Well, it is it was very useful to have it at home. Otherwise, if we don't have at home, then we have to start going to the hospital, or maybe call the ambulance, maybe call... Uh, but by the time when we call the ambulance and all, she, already gets, she gets very low, very down because of the breathing. So this, this oxygen helps a lot. <laughs> Quality for all, for all, please underline all. For me, if I were to think about a perfect world, it's a world where somebody would come from Subukia, a peasant farmer, and is able to access the quality of care where somebody else who is, let's say, a civil servant or somebody uh, having a post in the government or whatever is, you know, like there is an equality, like all of them can say, we, you know, it's universal, like that kind of a thing. For me, that's, that's a perfect world. That's a perfect world. Dome, faso, faso, dome, dome, na faso. Faso no don't me, don't me no faso, faso.